I'm at the halfway point and it's a very interesting place to be right now. It's been interesting in terms of measuring my success and also making those fine-tuning adjustments in order to improve on what I have accomplished thus far. Today's video is all about numbers and I find that there's a lot of stigma around measurements and numbers and using a scale um, and there's been times that I've been on that same page as well but I also feel like it's so very important for you to take your measurements know your starting point know where you want to get to that way you can see your success it'll keep you motivated and all of our bodies are different and they're all going to respond differently that's why it's important to know your numbers by knowing your numbers, I mean knowing your body weight, your body fat percentage, um, and also just general size of different body parts that you want to see change, including your waist, your hips, your biceps, your quads, your, your chest, your back, all of those things. How are you going to know if you're making a difference if you don't know those numbers? So now, I actually didn't weigh myself over the last few weeks because I didn't want that number to mess with me in terms of feeling like I was getting somewhere because it is true when you weigh yourself it's gonna fluctuate on a daily basis it's gonna be based your weight's gonna change on like what you ate if you've gone to the bathroom how much water you're holding how much water you just had to drink um, what time of day it is uh, what, what time of the month it is all that stuff is going to contribute to a fluctuation in your weight it's the best way to get uh, consistent weight and to be able to really compare your your and track your results be completely naked weigh yourself on a specific time of day like first thing in the morning when you first wake up weigh yourself then and then you'll kind of have a more consistent foundation to kind of track your success that being said I weighed myself today because I was at the midway mark and I was actually a little disappointed because I wanted the number to be higher than it was which is you know a totally different experience but it's a fun one and it wasn't as high as I thought it would be which I'm glad I didn't weigh myself leading up to now because I would have been maybe discouraged um, overall to share with you and compare my measurements from before I started to where I am now I've gained a total of three pounds and my body fat percentage has gone up by 1.2 percent so I've definitely gained weight and I've gained it quite gradually which is a good thing um, I actually thought I'd gain more weight than that but I haven't so that's okay and then I also did my measurements of my overall um, my waist my hips and everything to see what maybe has changed in that area um, I do tend to gain weight first in my lower body so my hips have gone up maybe like half an inch my waist has gone up a bit um, biceps and quads unfortunately have pretty much stayed the same so I'm still waiting to see those numbers spike up a little bit but again as you gain muscle and perhaps lose a little bit more body fat in those areas those are the general number may not change drastically or at all so now that I know that I've gained weight I've gained a little bit of size in my body the next thing to measure is, which is my favorite thing to measure, is your strength. I've been tracking all the lifts that I've been doing in the last four weeks and each week I've adjusted and added a little bit more weight if it's possible. If I'm able to lift a little more, I add a little bit more. a little bit longer at the gym because you're playing around with weight often but that's the only way to really be able to know if you're if you're increasing in your strength I had one goal when I started this bulking program and if you follow my Instagram or my IG story you might have heard me mention that my one main goal was to enhance the size of my arms specifically my triceps I've never really focused on my triceps before in the gym um, I naturally have fairly toned arms but they're not that strong so I wanted to gain size in my triceps and I also wanted to perform 
dips, body weight dips, so the ones that you see where you're just going down with your body weight. I've never been able to do one. I decided at the beginning of my bulking journey to do assisted tricep dips at least twice a week and each week I was able to lower the assistance from the machine and so this just past week I was lowering it and I was able to do five so I lowered it more and I was able to still do five so I thought okay if I can do five at this level of assistance I should just see if I can do one on my own and it turns out I did five on my own <laughs> freaking pumped like so pumped and that was a huge fitness goal for me that I'm really excited about and I do believe it's because of the type of training and eating that I've been doing during this bulking phase that's why it's important to know all your numbers don't be scared of any one area and don't let any one area discourage you if you feel like your weights all over the place and doesn't make sense then try tracking your measurements if your measurements aren't changing then start tracking what you're doing at the gym one of those areas you're gonna find an answer for where you're at and what's what's changing what's not changing and then you can start to adjust what you need to adjust in terms of my nutrition I just wanted to give out the specifics because I've been asked a few times the breakdown of my macronutrients so that's my my carbs my proteins and healthy fats so I've been playing around with that the last four weeks and so right now I'm at about 150 grams protein a day, 120 carbohydrates and about 50 grams of fat. And the protein is quite high for me. I'm a smaller person in stature. I'm only about five foot two, but I just wanted to make a higher goal for myself. I, I can't say honestly that I've hit that number every single day, but I'm just doing my best to get as high as I can with that number. Um, in terms of calories, the the most effective way that I've found to, to to have a surplus in your diet is to just focus on the macros, hitting all of that, and then you'll reach whatever calorie surplus that you need to hit. There's so many empty calories out there, so if you focus on getting the nutrients first, the calories will follow. How I was able to calculate what my macros are currently at is I used an online calculator. There's so many out there. I'm going to link one below that I've used in the past, but also I have a fitness blog. It's called the 52 Fit Club. It's an online fitness blog. It's a community of people that all work out. We all, you know, follow the same workouts. And if you are a member of the 52 Fit Club, I will happily calculate your macros for you. Just send me an email and all that information is below and on my website. So it's really important to have a plan for any type of fitness goal. So you need to create the goal, create the plan. So now for the next four weeks, my plan is to make some adjustments at the gym, which will include slowing down even more. So I'm going to cut my reps even lower to six to eight and really take those breaks in between my sets for the next four weeks. My short-term goals were to increase my strength in my dips and my pull-ups and that's something that I got to see which is really exciting and motivating me. So for the next four weeks, I want to continue on with improving my dips and my pull-ups. I'm at about five in a row right now, so I'm hoping by the end of the four weeks I can get to ten in a row. And my long-term goal right now, the reason that I'm doing this whole gain in the first place is because I am considering going into a fitness competition in the spring and this is the ideal time to be putting on muscle and size uh, for the type of competition that I want to do so I have a short-term plan which is just increasing my strength and size and my long-term plan is to is to build a physique that will be competitive in the spring so I'll keep you posted on that whole journey when that starts probably in January and for those of you who aren't interested in doing a fitness competition and you're wondering what kind of long-term goals you could be incorporating into your fitness journey, you could be signing up for a marathon or a hike or those awesome warrior dash races or Tough Mudder or something like that or joining a sports team. Maybe you're already on a sports team but you want to get on like the first line or the travel team or something like that. And set small fitness goals for yourself in order to keep yourself motivated along the way, um, whether it's to run for 15 minutes on the treadmill or do this many sprints or lift this amount of weight or even just that you're going to go to the gym 
three times a week. Every time you create a goal and you achieve it, it gives you motivation to move on to the next. I mean, for me, almost every week, my short-term goal is just to, to get all my workouts in. One other motivator that I find works really well is gym selfies. Um, if you follow my Instagram, you notice that I do take a lot of selfies, but I really encourage everyone to do them. Everyone that's a member of my blog, 52 Fit Club, I encourage them to take pics along the way. You don't necessarily obviously have to share them and make them public, but a lot of us will forget how far we've come because you see your body every single day so you won't notice the changes um, and often I will be at the gym and look in the mirror and be like oh and like nothing's changing and I'll get frustrated and then I'll actually go through my phone or um, on my computer and go back um, three months six months a year and a half ago two years ago five years ago and see how far I've actually come. I mean, I, my body has changed so much over five years and you forget, you forget all the changes that you've, you've managed to accomplish. So I think that's so important. Take that before picture because you know, you'll take a lot of pictures along the way. There's no real after picture. It's just before you accomplish this goal, before you accomplish that goal, before you accomplish the next goal. So take those photos. I highly recommend it. I actually had a client share with me um, a photo that they had taken of themselves like three months ago and then a photo of them now. The changes are significant and they're drastic and it's it's amazing and, and you need to have that photo evidence sometimes to keep you motivated so I highly recommend doing that too. I would say overall my biggest challenges so far during this bulk has been to embrace um, slowing down, embrace you know my body changing though the measurements don't reflect any huge changes there's definitely changes that I can tell personally there's certain pairs of pants that I can't fit into at the moment for some people that might be a hard thing to adjust to but for me I'm just like I'm just gonna go buy a new pair of jeans because I want the gains I want the strength I want the power I want the challenge that's what drives me at the end of the day. I just love um, finding ways to challenge myself mentally and physically. It's not about a certain aesthetic look for me as much as it is how far I can push myself. That's what really drives me at the end of the day. And I'm always going to be setting myself new goals. I don't know what they'll be next. I mean, there's just, it's limitless what you can achieve when you, when you want to, when you believe something, when you create a dream, when you focus on it. If getting fit and getting healthy is something that you want to do, envision where you want to be and then start making the plot points on how to get there. And if you need any assistance, if you need ideas for working out at home or at the gym, like, like I said, I have a fitness blog. Um, I write in it daily. I put new workouts in there Monday to Friday. They're always different, targeting different muscle groups um, and keeping it fresh and exciting because I feel like that's the number one uh, way that you'll stay committed to a plan is if you don't feel like you're doing the same thing every day as well as the fact that it's a very effective way to train your body. Anyways, to recap, this four week bulk has definitely kept me motivated because I do feel stronger. I'm really excited to see what I can achieve in another four weeks. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Please subscribe if you want to catch the next video. And I am definitely interested in any kind of helpful tips anybody out there might have for me. And until next time, bye.